Welcome back to the lab. Today we're going to architect the PFC power module. For those just dropping in, this is one critical piece of the larger objective. We're designing a 2400 watt UPS capable of long run times and high efficiency. We have a couple parts of this PFC module halfway designed, the output magnetics for the full H converter and a PFC controller. That is great, but until today, we didn't know exactly how these pieces of power electronics needs to bolt up with the rest of our system without causing a problem. Thankfully, we just finished making the mainboard architecture define exactly that interface. The mainboard architecture will guide our work today because it defines what power and control signals are available for each module. Not wasting a second, let's start with something familiar, the backplane connector. This pinout is the same as the mainboard, which is a good thing. The enable, sync, ready, all that, everything comes from the mainboard and ends up in one of two places, either low voltage circuitry or a bank of optical isolators. The low voltage circuitry controls a couple fans and performs stall detection, then it passes that back as a filtered and pretty logic signal. We also included a copy of the flyback converter, which generates voltages for control logic and gate drive. What may not be obvious to everyone when looking at the isolation region containing the PFC block is that we're hinting at which pieces of power electronics actually live on each side of this system and how much lives on the DC bus side. In this case, the PFC controller with associated FETs, as well as the FETs that make up the H bridge for the full H converter, these FETs are driven by an isolated gate driver which is controlled on the DC bus side. It has five kilovolt isolation baked in. The intermediate bus voltages are defined here as well. The PFC should generate a maximum of 425 volts, which is stepped down by the full H converter to the nominal DC link voltage of 350 volts. Note, we established five kilovolts of isolation between the low voltage circuitry and everything else, where the low voltage circuit is referenced to protective earth. The three and a half kilovolt isolation between mains and the DC link is what allows the DC link to be optionally tied to neutral on either output without consequence. Okay, nothing that I'm seeing in this architecture is really causing me heartburn. This appears without diving in like something that should perform reasonably well. Adding a small micro to the PFC allows for more complex control and monitoring, but if we don't need that level of detail, why add it? A potential way to reduce cost and complexity is to remove the PFC microcontroller and just drive the full H controller directly with the enable coming from the main board. Monitor readiness with some mains detection circuitry that's running with comparators and other more passive components. Just use analog circuitry to reduce the complexity of this daughter card tremendously. I, that could be really good because it's not doing a whole lot other than just being a power supply. And quite honestly, this PFC module is going to be a bit dense. There's a lot to cram onto this power module. Thinking only of the custom magnetics that we're slating to put onto this card, we're installing a full H transformer, which is probably like four square inches, full H output inductor, which is not gonna be very small because it needs to be around 400 micro Henry's, two custom inductors for the PFC, and a flyback transformer, all of this on one daughter card. Never mind the heat sinks, the two current sense transformers, and the input common mode choke. This entire card is going to be crammed full of magnetic parts. That's like five sets of E-cores and four off-the-shelf inductors. Like, what? This is going to be tight. If we try to use the double slot card width, that only gives us 40 millimeters of height as well. Saving five millimeters of that for clearance so we don't short out against the adjacent card, that only leaves us 35 millimeters to work with, and that is not a lot. Space constraints are a whole nother problem, but thankfully we can tweak some of the magnetic stuff down the road to optimize for size and give up a little bit of efficiency. For now, we have a bit of extra time. We walked through the detailed PFC architecture pretty quickly, so I'd like to use our time wisely. Let's find some parts that may improve the performance of our PFC or meet the increased isolation requirement of the new UPS. Our electric strength target was three and a half kilovolts for the first UPS prototype. Turns out, that's not really enough for 350 volts DC, we need five kilovolts. The first thing that comes to mind is the isolated gate driver. We selected a three and a half kilovolt rated part last time around, but thankfully SI Labs has a five kilovolt isolated version that provides more output current and is only marginally more expensive. We'll go from half an amp peak current on the gate drive to four amps of peak current and achieve the required isolation all by switching to the SI 82398BD4 IS. The whole uh, 8239 series has the required requirements. It's all just about what type of 
input signal you want. We need a new PFC controller because the TA1 annoys me and some opto isolators. To be clear, what I mean by annoy in this context is that it annoys me that I don't feel 100% confident that I've configured the controller correctly, and it annoys me that the simulation provided by TI makes things more confusing instead of less. I don't mess around with parts that waste my time, so I'm looking for an alternate. I'll start with the easy part, opto-isolators. We chose some LTV-826S opto-isolators from Lighton. These things are rated for 5 kilovolts, have two channels, and cost a bit over 40 cents in small quantities. Sounds fine to me. Now, the PFC controller itself is a bit more complex. I'm confident that we've selected the best PFC controller available from TI for our application. It's not the best PFC controller on the market, but I think it's the best balance of complexity and performance. If we open up the world beyond TI, I wonder what we'll find. I dug into two other component manufacturers, Linear Tech and On Semiconductor. I started with Linear Tech for one big reason. I know their simulation models work and typically demonstrate the performance of that part in the real world. Design tools that work are what I'm all about. I dug around their available PFC controllers and was honestly a little disappointed. Analog went a direction I didn't expect. Digital PFC. It's not my favorite approach because any digital system, in my opinion, is more likely to experience sensitivity to transient events or latch up. Like, I don't want to misconfigure a register and cause my PFC to blow up. I'd rather have an analog system in control of my PFC where things are more constrained by physics rather than human design. That said, their lower power non-isolated PFCs look awesome, so I'm gonna keep those in mind. Some of those converters run with like four external components and deliver a couple hundred watts. So basically, our options are to use a digital PFC or give up interleaved phases, which doesn't work very well. Actually, there is a third option. Let's look at another vendor. On Semiconductor's PFC regulators are interesting because they have a controller that's functionally equal to the TI part we selected, but they have a three-phase variant as well, so we're not limited to two phases. Personally, I found their design tool to be laid out in a more understandable way, and their documentation was sufficient. Actually, I'm pretty impressed. There's no simulation model to speak of, but that also means that the simulation won't look like a confusing dumpster fire, so there's that. The whole UCC 28070 PFC controller simulation business leaves me with a bad taste in my mouth. The on semiconductor controller is a little more expensive, but I like that we have the three phase option if we need it, and I'm confident that we'll be able to design this circuit with confidence that it's configured correctly. We can use the three phase option to consider removing two current sense transformers and replace them with three shunt resistors. After all, the current sense transformers we're currently using are not small because we weren't sure if these would be bridging across an isolation region. Now that we know that they're not required to be isolated, we might have more options that are physically smaller, and I think the current sense transformer will be a lot more efficient than the alternative. And I feel like we were a little scatterbrained today. I feel like this video is a little all over the place and there's a lot of shifting going on in our PFC design. Well, that's kind of what happens when a design starts without clear direction. Sometimes life is churned because we start headed down a path without knowing where we want to go. I guess what I'm trying to say is we're taking a small step back, but I'm confident that it's for the overall good of this design. Like the PFC module architecture, like it's starting to see where this PFC fits and I think that the PFC module as a whole is set up for success. And I think that we have a clear path forward to make a PFC module that's compatible with the main board that we just talked about. We can leverage a lot of our TI controller-based design to press forward with the on controller, but we need to select new compensation components. We're well on our way through this awesome project. If you wanna see more, if you wanna see this project keep going, don't forget to subscribe so you'll be notified of our future videos. We're about to design the AC input filter and simulate the PFC module. I am really excited to finish designing the PFC power module. And if you like what you saw today, let me know by hitting the like button on this video. If you are excited to see this project on a schematic page, let us know on Twitter or leave a comment down below. Most of all, I hope that you learned something great today and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for watching EE for everyone and thank you for staying till the end. Bye.